The people that wrote Unix could have named this anything like look or search or pattern, but they decided to call it grep, and you'll just have to get used to it. Later on in this section, I'll tell you how grep got its name. Grep requires at least one argument. That argument has to be the pattern that you want grep to search for. Because grep is a filter, if you don't put any file names on the command line, it will simply search the standard input. If you want it to search one or more files, you can put their names on the command line as well. For example, suppose I want to search for people whose names contain a capital S somewhere on the line. I would run this command, grep space capital S space phone list. As you can see, this command found four lines containing a capital S in the phone list file. Three of them start with a capital S. The last one contains a capital S in the middle of the line. Because grep is a filter, I don't have to list the name of the file to search on the command line. Instead, I could redirect its input to read it from that file. This command would have the same exact output as the one I just entered. There's a third way to produce this same output. Because grep is a filter, I can stick it inside a pipeline. This command line shows a pipeline where the cat command is sending the phone.list output to the input of the process running grep. Note that grep's part of the pipeline does not contain a file name for grep to read. Instead, we want grep to read its standard input, which the shell has connected to the output of the previous command via the pipeline. This is how grep accesses the characters in phone.list, because the cat command has put them into the pipeline. All filters will read their standard input if you do not list a file on the command line. If you list a file on their command line, it ignores the standard input and reads from that file or several files if you've listed several on the command line, instead. Regardless of whether the command is in a pipeline or not, if you put a file name on the command line, it will ignore the standard input. What happens if you run the grep command, but you leave off a file name and it's not in a pipeline? Suppose I enter the command grep space capital S and press return without entering a file name. As you see, the system just sits there. Have I made a mistake? Is something bad happening? Because I haven't told grep to search a specific file, it's trying to read its standard input. Because I have no redirection characters on the command line, the shell connects this process to the default input device, which, as you may know, is the terminal that I type on. In this case, the grep command is waiting to read its input off my keyboard. Because I'm not typing, it's not reading anything. This is a common problem when you're using filters that will read the standard input. The Unix system treats all files and devices the same. The problem with keyboards is there's no way to generate an into file from a keyboard, because keyboards aren't files. Instead, the terminal device driver will generate an into file if you type a special character. That character is a control D typed at the beginning of a line. To free up this command, to tell it that I don't have any characters to enter, I simply have to type control D. And as you see, the shell gives me back my prompt because the previous command is terminated. Grep can be told to search for virtually any pattern. However, you have to make sure that the pattern gets to grep. Before the pattern gets to grep, it has to move through the shell. So we have to be very careful about putting any shell meta characters into a pattern. Let me give you an example. Suppose you wanted to find people whose phone numbers began with a four. To find such lines, 
you could use this pattern, a tab followed by a four, because phone numbers always begin after a tab. This command is how you would enter that search. Grep space tab four space phone dot list. You enter a tab by pressing the tab key on the keyboard, and that's represented in this graphic by the word tab. If you actually run this command, this is the output you'll see. It's true that you find two lines that start with a four on the phone number. You find one line whose phone number simply contains a four. What went wrong? The problem is the shell. It turns out that a tab character is used by the shell to separate arguments on the command line. It does the same thing as a space. By putting a space and a tab next to one another on the command line, the shell assumed you simply wanted to separate the word grep from the number four and threw away both the space and the tab. As a result, the argument that grep got was simply a four and it looked for lines that contained a four anywhere on the line. To get the tab character, which is special to the shell, past the shell, you have to quote it. This will constantly be a problem when you're searching for patterns, and I recommend you get into the habit of putting single quotes around your entire pattern. Recall that single quotes tell the shell to send everything within the single quotes as a single argument to the command that you're writing. Note what happens when I make this change to the command line. Here, grep space single quote tab four single quote space phone dot list finds only the two lines whose phone numbers begin with a four. Again, this is a good habit to get into. By using two grep commands connected by a pipeline, you can search for two patterns in the list. For example, suppose I want to find phone numbers that begin with a four, but also contain a six somewhere. To find those numbers that begin with a four, I have to search for the pattern tab followed by a four. The first command in this pipeline searches for those phone numbers that begin with a four. However, I don't want all phone numbers that begin with a four. I only want those phone numbers that begin with a four and also contain a six. That's the purpose of the second grep in the pipeline. The first one generates all the phone numbers that begin with a four. The second grep picks out only those that contain a six. And as you see, we found the one line in the file whose phone number begins with a four and contains a six. The grep command contains a couple of options that allow you to improve the quality of your searches. However, these options are discussed fully in the textbook and I won't cover them here. Also, the text contains a couple of exercises I'd like you to work on. I've listed those exercise numbers in the course manual.